working on Phoenix, Arizona, one of the fastest growing cities in the USA. We're in the Valley of the Sun, the scene of this week's USA boxing action. Welcome to the Phoenix Civic Plaza. Budweiser, the king of beers, presents USA's Thursday Night Fight. Hi, everybody. I'm Al Albert, and tonight we'll have a visit from Tony the Tiger, and we'll see if he's still growling. Also, the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship. And, time permitting, we'll take a look at another of the U.S. Olympians. That's tonight on USA's Thursday Night Fights. In our main event, it is scheduled for 10 rounds. Junior welterweights, Tony Baldazar and Pedro Laza. Tony the Tiger, 33 wins, 26 by knockout. His career temporarily KO'd by a two-year prison term, but he returned to the ring late in 88, and he has won seven of his last eight fights. And tonight goes up against the veteran Laza, a ring tactician who is looking for his 30th victory as a professional. And Sean O'Grady, uh, this is the classic matchup, boxer versus puncher. Exactly. These are usually, Al, my favorite kind of fights. Tony the Tiger Baltasar is aggressive. He's a southpaw, and he's got a good left hook. Now, as of recently, he's been working with his trainer, Jerry Cheatham, on his left hand, and you have to wonder how much power that's going to take out of his left hook. As far as his, as his opponent tonight, Pedro Lassa, he is a masterful boxer. He'll try to score points from the outside and win his rounds there. All right, cat and mouse in our main event. Our first fight up, the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship. Right now, the title is vacant, and it will be decided between Vincent Bulware and Tony Harrison. And, Sean, uh, more than a championship fight, uh, this is a grudge rematch. Exactly. These two have met before earlier in their career. Both visited the canvas in that fight, and that fight was in the junior, I mean, the, uh, the yeah, the, the super middleweight, middleweight division. Now they're fighting in the light heavyweight division, just one step up. And now, also, they're fighting for this so important USBA championship. The last three title holders in this division have fought for world champions. Case in point, over the weekend, we're going to see David Vetter, the former champion, who is going to fight David, uh, who's going to fight Virgil Hill. That's how significant this title is. Both men realize it, and they're going to and try to win. And it's actually been an instant title shot for the winner of the USBA. And time permitting, we'll take a look at a fight uh, seen earlier on the card here in Phoenix, and it's the colorful former Olympian, Anthony Hembrick. He missed the bus at Seoul, but he is riding high as a pro. He has won his first 11 professional fights and now is ranked number nine in the world in the light heavyweight division by the IBF. So it is a very busy night. A lot of action here in Phoenix on USA's Thursday Night Fights. Tonight's boxing is being brought to you by the U.S. Navy. You and the Navy, full speed ahead. Welcome to USA's Thursday Night Fights. Opening it up with the USBA Light Heavyweight Championship. Vincent Bulware versus Tony Harrison. We saw Bulware in a tough fight last year against Tyrone Mitchell Frazier, who's actually outfought and came away with the draw. He is in this corner is being brought to you by... Kale comments for you, but first... Uh, after uh, Tony Harrison left, uh, we talked to referee Bob, uh, Bobby Ferrara, and you want to pass along what he said. Well, I'll tell you, in that eighth round, right at the end of the round, uh, uh, Bulwer was scoring heavily on uh, Harrison. He said he was to the point where he was ready to stop it. You know, we talked right there. At th that point of the fight, it was time for uh, the referee to step in and say that's all. All right, first KO comment, and this is uh, from Patrick Boom Boom Baker out of Davenport, Iowa. And Sean, uh, the boomer, says, uh, I often hear Sean say that the jab is the most important weapon a fighter can have. Why is it so important? And can a fighter become a world champion if he doesn't have a good jab? Right, as we've talked about on Thursday night, that uh, left jab or even the right jab for the southpaw is so important because there's so much you can do with it. You can set your opponent up. It's both offense and it's defense. As far as a fighter winning a championship without left jabs, of course, it happens a lot. It's not the only weapon in boxing. One of the nice weapons that Mike Tyson had, and he did not have a left jab, as uh, was witnessed in his fight with Buster Douglas, he had, uh, he was able to get the angles. He moved over to the side, slipped the left jab of his opponent, and then he came in from the angles. Next question comes from Donald Thomas. Pedro La 
Plaza steps in the ring after one of the biggest shockers on USA Thursday night fights. Now it's our main event. What can we do for an encore? Well, if this guy wins, uh, that will do it as he goes up against the favorite, Tony Baltazar. Rock'em Sock'em, who has won 33 fights against three defeats, 26 by knockout. Baltazar, one time leading contender. And he is now back in the ring after several years off. He came back in late 88. He had this fight with Buddy McGirt, put him down before losing. That's his only loss in his last eight fights. But he knows nothing about tonight's opponent, Pedro Laza. Well, most of my fights, I don't like to look at films or nothing, the people that I fight, because I don't like to know what they look like, because when I go in a fight, I like to go in there knowing nothing about the guy, and I like to figure him out during the fight. Because if I go in there knowing the guy's going to throw something that I've seen him throw a lot of times before, if you expect that to happen, and it doesn't happen. You know, he goes out there, and they surprise you, and you, it doesn't happen, then I don't like that. So I just like to not know nothing about the guy. And he doesn't want to know anything about his opponents. He's afraid of paralysis by analysis. You study your opponent so much that you're overconfident. His opponent tonight is Pedro Lazo. Like Baldazar was out for a, a couple of years. He's a former Cuban lightweight champion. And tonight he goes up against a very aggressive fighter in Baldazar. And Lazo explains what we'll see tonight from Pedro. They're going to see the real fighter, you know, the real boxer, the real style of boxer, the real, you know, I can say real boxer, real good, nice movement, nice quick hands, quick legs, everything. And nice punch, too. Well, he calls himself a real technician. He has a lot of speed. His nice punch he was talking about, his left jab. The Tom's tail of the tape. Bolazar at 5'8", 142 and a quarter. Laza 5'6", 142 and, a, and three quarters. And uh, Laza with the three inch reach advantage. And now, Sean, how do you see it on the blackboard? Well, Tony Balthazar should stay close in this fight. Don't give Pedro a chance to jab and score. Faint his jab. It's hard to beat a jab in Southpaw with a three inch less reach he should not try to out jab Laza, so just feign him out of position and box Laza up with his feet, cut off the ring, move right, make Pedro run into his powerful left hook. And speaking of Pedro Laza, move left, try to circle behind the southpaw Baltazar, use the reach. Tony the Tiger will charge right straight at Laza with powerful hooks, try to beat him to the punch, and be quick. Sting Baltazar, then move. The rules here in Arizona, three knockdown rule in effect, no standing eight, saved by the bell only in the last round, and 10-point must system involved three judges will be doing the scoring. We're ready now for the introductions of the fighters. Let's go to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr. All right, fans, here we go. Urban World Promotions presents the co-featured event for the evening. Ten rounds of boxing presenting junior welterweights in the ring and the referee in charge of this bout, Al Munoz. Introducing to you first on my right, fighting out of the red corner, and he's wearing black trunks with white trim. He's originally from Havana, Cuba, now fighting out of Miami, Florida. His weight tonight is 142 and three quarter pounds, and his record, 29 wins, five defeats, with 11 wins by way of knockout, please welcome a boxer known as the magician, Pedro Lassa. And his opponent across the ring on my left, fighting out of the blue corner in this 10 round bout, and he's entering the ring, wearing black trunks with tiger trim. Fighting out of and representing Scottsdale, Arizona, his weight tonight is the same weight, 142 and three quarter pounds. His outstanding record, 33 wins, three losses, one draw with 26 big wins by way of knockout. He's ranked the number seven contender by the NABF. Introducing Tony the Tiger Baltazar. Gentlemen, the mandatory eight counters in effect. The mandatory three knockdown is in effect. 
The bell will not save you. Let's shake hands. Let's have a good fight, gentlemen. And this is scheduled for 10 rounds. Tony Baltazar, the age of 29, and this is essentially his second uh, career. He was one of the uh, leading contenders, ranked as high as number six by the IBF, but then spent a couple of years in the prison uh, for vehicular manslaughter, as the story goes, uh, driving uh, under the influence uh, in an accident, and, and a friend was uh, killed in that crash. And Baltazar now back since uh, late 88. He has had eight fights. He has won seven of them. His only loss to Buddy McGurt, a fight in which he had McGurt down early in that fight. He says he would like to...